Hello, my name is Bill Strand, and today we're going to take a look at the question, what chameleon should I get? And this is usually asked by a beginning keeper who's looking at a myriad of choices and is wondering, what's the best one to start off with? So we're going to go ahead and answer that question, get you started on the right direction. To do that, we're going to be talking about the three most common species that you can find. The Veiled Chameleon, Panther Chameleon, and the Jackson's Chameleon. Now this isn't going to be a detailed care uh, discussion. We're just going to give you a basic overview so you know the differences between the three. Most people when they ask the question as to which chameleon they should get, they're talking about species. Now that's important and we'll get to that later, but first I'd like to lay the groundwork of some other considerations. First, get captive bred. There are so many captive bred babies widely available that there's no reason to take on the challenge of acclimating a wild caught chameleon. Here are some of the advantages. 1. Minimal acclimation. They were born being served by hairless apes. This is not a new concept. 2. Top health. This is if you pick the right breeder, and we will talk about that. 3. Support from the breeder. When you are starting out, having a go-to mentor is very helpful. As far as feeding is concerned, definitely feel free to offer him some food today. Um, it is day one, so if he doesn't show interest, that's nothing to worry about. Some of them take a day or even two to kind of settle into their new enclosure before they show much interest in eating. So. Wild-caught chameleons have to be acclimated, including checked for parasites and could have internal organ damage from the import process. They need to get used to humans. The money you save on the initial buy price goes right back out in vet costs or shorter life. For your first chameleon experience, please pay the money and get the quality of captive bread. It is well worth it. Next is age. Usually full-grown chameleons are wild caught, and we're avoiding these for our first chameleon. But we also have the problem of chameleons being sold too young by larger businesses. And so, who are the good breeders that you can trust? Well, that's a tricky question. You're going to have to get plugged into the community and ask around. But below, I've linked in a couple of breeders that I know I can trust and will treat you right. Third is gender. Female chameleons get a bad rap for difficulties in laying eggs. The bottom line is if you provide proper husbandry, they don't have infertile clutches all the time, and if they do, it's not a problem. They bounce back and get on with life. This means the proper temperatures, nutrition, and hydration. And the same thing is true for male chameleons as well. I would much rather focus on proper chameleon husbandry than suggest that you get a male chameleon because they can handle more improper care. Given proper chameleon husbandry, your female chameleon will be able to lay eggs without an issue. With proper husbandry, both male and female chameleons are wonderful chameleon pets. And finally, expectations. To be a responsible chameleon community educator, I need to touch on your ex expectations of a chameleon as a pet. These little dragons are designed to sit in trees and not be noticed. If you want to make your chameleon happy, walk by his cage and pretend you didn't see him. That's really the kind of pet a chameleon is. Oh, and I know you've seen people walk around with chameleons on their shoulder or they're talking about how the chameleons always want to get out of their cage and come play with them. Unfortunately, most of the time, these are the keepers not reading the chameleon's body language correctly, and the chameleon is really stressed out and doesn't want to ride on that shoulder, doesn't want to play, and is trying to escape poor cage conditions. Now, there are a relatively few individuals that do appear to have no fear of humans and have no problem using us as moving trees. But to have this as an expectation will, most of the time, lead to disappointment. With chameleons, we have to expect a shy creature and care for them as such, with much space and time to themselves. So let's talk species. You want one that you're interested in, but whose care conditions you can provide. First, let's talk about the veiled chameleon. Camaleo caleptritis is the most commonly found species because it grows quickly and reproduces easily. It is a beautiful chameleon with an alien-looking cask. Here we have a male veiled chameleon. This is the most commonly kept chameleon as a pet. You can notice he's pretty impressive size, but one thing I want you to notice about this guy is he looks skinny. What do you think that's about? Well, the thing is, 
this is how they should look. What we generally do in captivity is feed them way too much and they become obese. So take a look at what he looks like. This is what you want yours to look like. Now the one thing about veiled chameleons is that their personality can be described with the word very. Very cranky, very shy, rarely very friendly. But whatever it is, they take it to extremes. This one here is actually very shy. Come here, it's okay. A little bit, a little bit not happy, but he's okay. All right, we're gonna get him back in his home. And here's a female veiled chameleon. Now, even though she looks a little bit smaller than the male that I brought uh, and showed you earlier, they do get sizable. So go ahead and give her the same size cage you would a male. Now, you'll notice this one is a little bit rotund. Well, she's gravid and she's gonna be laying a clutch of eggs. You've heard that uh, veiled chameleons can die egg bound. The, the truth is they're designed to lay eggs and so they should be able to do it without a problem. If you take care of your chameleon, give her proper husbandry, not, number one, she's not gonna be laying as many infertile clutches and number two, she'll do it without a problem and uh, bounce back just fine. Now, if you can see those patterns that are starting to come in, the yellows and the blue dots, those are her gravid colorations. And that's the warning to the male to say, stay away. Now, as she, uh, if she saw a male, they'd get much brighter. But right now, they're uh, not only, not only is there no male around, but she's starting to shed. So they're a little subdued, but it gets quite dramatic. You can tell the male by his back spur. They have this straight out of the egg, so you can sex veiled chameleons right after hatching. These guys are great as a first chameleon because they live comfortably in our normal household temperatures. As with any chameleon, your UVB and nutrition needs to be done right. Veiled chameleons grow at breakneck speed, so it is extra important with them. Which brings us to price. Fortunately or unfortunately, veils can be bought for a cheap price. This frees up money for other supplies, but some people cut corners because they don't want to spend more on the cage and lighting than they do the animal. Do not fall into that trap. Invest in the proper UVB lamps, supplementations, and other equipment for every chameleon, regardless of how much you paid for it. They are living beings, and we are not owners. We are caretakers. So summary, veiled chameleons are beautiful and hardy when properly cared for. The only points taken off are for a bit of a cranky personality. And now panther chameleons. Panther chameleons are absolutely gorgeous. Their personalities are more mild-mannered than veils, though they can be fiery. They do well in human temperature environments, but are more sensitive to lower temperatures than the veiled or jacksons. The wide range of colors makes panther chameleons one of the most popular pet chameleons. This is Bolt. He is a male Umbanja panther chameleon. And you can see those incredible colors coming out. Right now, he's puffed up because he's not so happy about being out here with me. But you can see the relative size of him. He's a young adult, uh, about a little over a year old. So Bolt, say hello to the people. There we go. And next, we're gonna go ahead and bring out a female panther chameleon. Thank you, Bolt. We'll put you back where you want to be. And here is a female panther chameleon. They are much more docile, generally speaking, than the males. And they are a gorgeous creature. Right now, she's a little bit dark. She's uh, showing her bands. But uh, the, uh, the pink, the orangish, they're just wonderful little things. So if you're looking for a single chameleon to have, a female panther chameleon is a perfect choice. As you can see, she gets a little bit smaller than the males do, and so she's not going to need as much room. Although, if you're going by my philosophy, I'd give her that bigger cage anyway. It'll just give you more space to work with. What I like most about panther chameleons for a beginner is that there is a wide network of breeders that can help you along. With the gorgeous colors and the back-end support, I would suggest that a captive-bred panther chameleon from a long-term breeder be your choice for a first chameleon. I'd also like to point out that the females are incredible. You have a pinkish-orange chameleon. 
And finally, Jackson's chameleons. These are my favorite chameleon. How can you go wrong with those incredible horns? This is Prometheus. Prometheus is a yellow crested Jackson's chameleon. There are three subspecies of Jackson's chameleon recognized at this time. The yellow crested is what we mostly see. Now in the United States, we generally see yellow crested Jackson's chameleons that come from Hawaii. That's where a feral population has sprung up since the 70s. This one, Prometheus, is actually from Kenya, from the original uh, bloodlines. The wonderful thing about Jackson's chameleons is their personality. They have such a mild personality. Now, that means they're not going to bite at you as readily, but it doesn't mean that they enjoy being held and played with. Now, this is one of the rare times that I actually have this chameleon out. Usually he's in his cage because I know he doesn't enjoy being held. This is for educational purposes. All right, Prometheus, we're going to put you back. And now I have the pleasure of introducing you to one of the most wonderful chameleons, the female Jackson's chameleon. They are so even-tempered and have such a pleasant personality. Now, this doesn't mean that they enjoy being held. You notice her, she's got her hand up like this. That's because she's giving me the sign that she really doesn't want to be held. And this is the one thing about Jackson's chameleons that most people uh, have problems with, is they don't read the subtle language of the Jackson's chameleon. The veiled chameleon, the panther chameleon, they'll hiss at you, they'll bite at you. Jackson's chameleon, they'll just be very subtle. So you have to be good at reading chameleon body language. And this is a baby male Jackson's chameleon. He's about five months old. And you can see this is about the size that you want to get a Jackson's chameleon. Even though you can get a veiled chameleon or a panther chameleon uh, at three months, the Jackson's chameleon seem to be a little bit more sensitive. And so we like to hold on to them for five to six months. About this size is good. Their personality is the mildest of the top three. This is a good and bad thing. Good because they will be less skittish, but bad because people tend to think they like being played with and they should be kept as a pair in the same cage. Both are very incorrect. And if you think you are the exception and that your pair likes to be with each other, stop. Get them apart before the slow stress finally kills one of your chameleons. And Jackson's chameleons give live birth, so if you do get a wild-caught female, be ready for babies. They store sperm, so you could end up being surprised by babies one or even two years later. So, let's put them all on the same page and compare. The Veiled Chameleon, the Panther Chameleon, and the Jackson's Chameleon. Then we have the high-level considerations you need to think about. So let's start with size of cage. All three of these species are roughly the same size and take the same cage. The standard 2 foot by 2 foot by 4 foot tall cage is the minimum cage size for any of the males. Shorter is acceptable if you go wider. Larger is better. But please do not put a male of any of these in one of those 18 inch by 18 inch by 36 inch tall cages. If you are buying a chameleon from the pet store, please check the dimensions and remember that if the baby chameleon is old enough to be sold to you, it is old enough to live in its adult cage. For females, only the panther females are smaller than the male. All the others must be kept in the same size cage as the males. I would love to say to get the same size cage for a female panther chameleon, but I hesitantly acknowledge that a 18 inch by 18 inch by 36 inch high cage is acceptable for a female panther chameleon. Temperatures? You will notice that these chameleons are comfortable in the general home temperatures that we are. This may be why they work so well as first chameleons. But let's look at it another way. On the left is Fahrenheit for my U.S. listeners, and on the right is Celsius for the whole rest of the world. And no, I don't know why we do this. With all the authority of a Google search, the average daytime comfort range of humans is right around here, between 68 and 75 degrees. For nighttime, the National Sleep Foundation says our optimal temperature for sleep is 65. Now let's overlay the standard comfort levels of the three most popular chameleons and now we see why this works so well. The orange is daytime comfort temperatures with the blue being nighttime temperatures. The little sun is our target basking temperatures. 
Although our chameleons may be comfortable in the 70s, they do need the ability to warm up when they choose to, such as when they wake up from a cool night's rest. It is the ability to regulate their body temperature that keeps them in optimal health and able to properly digest their food. This is why we provide a basking bulb. Now you'll notice something about our Jackson's chameleon over here. The temperatures seem to be shifted downward from uh, these guys over here. That's critical. The Jackson's chameleon needs lower daytime temperatures, like in the 70s. Once you start getting into the 80s, you're getting a little bit out of their range. Now, please pay attention to that nighttime drop over here. They need that drop. What happens if they don't get this cool temperature, they don't get the nighttime drop, is they go into a, a sort of temperature exhaustion. Their body just doesn't get the rest it needs. And then six months later, they, they all of a sudden become sick or they even just drop dead. And you wonder what's going on. Well, without that, their body can't function well. So if you're not able to give the Jackson's Chameleon these cool daytime temperatures, this nighttime drop, then it's probably best to stick with these colorful chaps over here. Now, let's go ahead and do the same analysis, but for humidity. So let's get rid of all this temperature chart and we're gonna bring in the relative humidity chart. Humidity is measured in percent of water in the air relative to how much water vapor the air can hold at the current temperature. What? Well, let's just accept that definition right now and compare what our chameleons need versus what we feel comfortable with in our home life. According to housing studies, our home comfort level seems to be between 50% down to 30% relative humidity. Below that, and you're starting to get into nosebleed range. How about chameleons? Well, veiled and panther chameleons are around 50%, with veils on the lower end and the panther on the upper end. Jacksons are over here pushing down towards 40%, but really, if it is comfortable for you during the day, it's comfortable for them. The real difference is at night. Our comfort level is still about 50%, but you ever notice what happens outdoors? Especially when you're in the area where chameleons live. The nights get very humid. You start seeing a ring around the moon and the humidity spikes. You get mist or even fog. The humidity hangs out at 70% plus all the way up to 100%. And this is one thing that all of these species share. There is a definite personality difference between the three. Veils tend to be very cranky, very shy, and rarely they can be very friendly. Male and female personalities are similar. Panther chameleons have strong personalities, but are more agreeable than veiled chameleons. You have a much greater chance of getting an even-tempered panther chameleon. And females I find to be even more even-tempered. Their pinkish-orange color is beautiful, and they make great pets. Do not think of female panthers just as breeding stock. They are wonderful chameleon pets. Jackson's chameleons are the most mild-mannered. This is a blessing and a curse. The problem comes when people unfamiliar with chameleon body language misinterpret their passiveness for love and enjoyment playing games. The female Jackson's chameleons I have kept have been among the easiest to tame down, and I have had a number that will allow me to bring them over to a flower, and they will eat a fly while I hold her. All three are available as captive hatched, or in the case of Jackson's chameleons, captive born. Veils are almost exclusively offered as babies, though there are some adults from a feral population in Florida that are made available. Panther chameleons are a candy store as far as how many captive hatched varieties are easily found. Wild-caught adults are imported, but mostly purchased by breeders. And that is fine. Let them do that. Get a baby, and you will have a much better experience. In the U.S., Jackson's chameleons are sporadically available as babies, usually when they are born in the importer's facility. But Jacksons are mostly available as wild-caught adults from a feral population on Hawaii or from United States farm-raised. Either way, they are wild-caught. I have a link below to where you can find Jackson's chameleon breeders and some with true original Kenyan bloodlines. I have a separate row for Breeders Network. This is your community support, which is so important. Failed chameleons reproduce so easily that they can be offered by people who have no real chameleon experience and they will be unable to help you when you have an issue. 
If a Veiled Chameleon is your choice, then you'll probably have to find a support network other than the person who sold you the chameleon, unless they are a dedicated breeder. Panther chameleons are ideal with a rock-solid breeder's network. You can easily find a breeder that will be able to stick with you and guide you through any issue. Jackson's chameleons are challenged by the wild-caught imports. Only the dedicated breeders will stick with Jackson's due to the fact that wild-caughts will often undercut their breeding efforts. I'm actually one of those that love Jackson's chameleons and have invested in Kenyan bloodlines for my breeding group. I know the wild cots from Hawaii are so easy and relatively inexpensive to get, but you will not regret getting a captive-born baby raised up by a knowledgeable breeder. Now, if you want a tie-breaking vote, I'm going to vote for the panther chameleon. The panther chameleon is an incredibly gorgeous animal. It's got a pretty much a mild-mannered attitude, and most importantly, it's got a very strong breeder's network of people that can support you. You can call, and they can answer your questions, the questions you didn't think to ask. For further information, I have a lot of links below, including a link to an episode of the Chameleon Breeder podcast that goes into more detail than we have here. I also have links to breeders that I know will treat you right and offer quality animals. Thank you for joining me here. I'd like to know what chameleon did you choose for your first one and why? Share your experiences down here in the comment section and let's learn from each other.